Last week we started on a, a second series of Kingdom Principles because we had a first series last year. And um, we talked about the government upon his shoulders. Were you in church last week? Hello? Were you in church last week? Did God speak to you? Can you help me ask your neighbor who is in charge of your life? Mm, can you get a response? Mm, mm, can you ask the other neighbor who is in charge of your life? <laughs> Can you get a response, an honest response, truthful response in the presence of God? Hallelujah. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Do you choose Jesus this morning? Mm, mm. Kingdom principles, today we're talking about broken. 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 Psalm 51. Verses 16 and 17. Broken. Psalm 61, Psalm 51, sorry, did I say 61? Psalm 51, verses 16 and 17. For you do not desire sacrifice, or else I would give it. You do not delight in bond offerings. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. A broken and a contrite heart. These, O oh God, you will not despise. <laughs> the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. A broken and contrite heart. These, O oh God, you will not despise. This was a prayer of David after Nathan the prophet came to tell him that he had sinned against God. Do we know that story in scripture? Hello? Are you here? Yes? Do we know that scripture? Mm. This was David's prayer of repentance after he had done the unthinkable. Think about it for a minute. David, the same David, the man after God's heart, handpicked by God while he was tending sheep, anointed and chosen by God. He wasn't ordained by the hands or the choice of men. How did he end up here? Do we remember David? Do we remember his exploits? As a young man, he was writing psalms and singing to the Lord. He was a worshiper. As a young man, he put his life at risk because Goliath dared to boast and to confront the armies of God. He said, who, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? You know, his, his annoyance wasn't that Goliath was trying to fight the people. It was the fact that Goliath was raving against the Most High. Do we understand? So he took that fight because God was involved. The same David. Mm. The same David who played the harp and I'm trusting God to raise minstrels in this house who will worship and demons will go flying out of people. I didn't hear an amen from that ear. Mm. So when Saul was possessed with an evil spirit, what did they do? They invited David. And as David played the instrument and worshipped, the demon flew out of Saul. Talking about the same David. Mm. When the ark of God came into the city, the Bible said David celebrated like an ignoble man. To the point that his wife looked at him and despised him. 
And God responded to her. We're talking about the same David. He was a worshiper. He was a man after God's heart. He refused to touch Saul. Even when Saul was chasing him and trying to kill him. Why? He said, I cannot put my hand upon an anointed man of God. He said, you're a king anointed by God. I won't kill you. The same David. But something happened. Yes. While the kings were away at war, the Bible said David saw Bathsheba, the wife of Uriah, having a bath. And of all the beautiful women in Israel, David already had several wives at this time. He wanted that woman. He coveted that woman. And he was willing to do anything and everything. Eventually getting Uriah killed. But David came back. After all of that, after doing the unthinkable, David came back. And this psalm that we just read was his prayer of repentance. He said, God, you're not looking for sacrifices. Or I will give you much more. You do not delight in burnt offerings. That's not what this is about. The sacrifice that you're seeking, Lord, is a broken spirit. A broken spirit. Mm. Lord, you will not despise a contrite heart. Let me say to you this morning, no matter what it is that you have done, (laughs) no matter what it is that you did not do, this morning, there is grace to bring you home. God's arms are open unto you this morning. You may have been condemned. You may have made a terrible mistake. You may have failed God. You may have disappointed yourself. You know, that's the difficult one to get over. When you start to beat yourself up. Because you know that you're better than this. Don't ever walk away thinking that God has condemned you. Come as you are. But do not remain as you are. Broken. Come with that burden. But do not remain as you are. The challenge with the church is that we've told people to come to Jesus. Just as you are, come with all of the baggage. But maybe we've not done a good job about telling you that God wants you to change. He wants you to come to him with a contrite heart. Broken. 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 A contrite heart is a remorseful heart. Remorseful. Remorseful for past sin. With a resolve to avoid future sin. A heart that is truly sorry. Have you engaged someone that was truly sorry about what they did? Hello? I remember my husband here. Yeah? Okay. (laughs) I'm very quick to apologize. Very quick. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. At a point, one time my husband was like, yeah, stop apologizing because you apologize and you do it again. Uh, You don't mean it. And he was right. You know how you just say sorry so that... uh, You can move forward. Eh, Yeah, okay, sorry. Mm, mm, mm. And some of us have been saying those kinds of sorry to the Lord. Hey, I want to recite the Lord's prayer. And forgive us our... You know that now? The Lord's prayer. You know that line? And what? Mm. And so because it's in the Lord's prayer, you know, you... You recite that part as well. But are you truly 
sorry? Are you truly sorry? Do you even agree that you have trespassed? Hello, church. Have you met someone who was truly sorry? No, let me reverse that. Have you ever been truly sorry about something you did? Because we're talking about a broken heart this morning. Broken. Truly sorry. Truly remorseful. It's a kingdom principle. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart. And save such as have a contrite spirit. Psalm 34 verse 18. A contrite spirit. A broken heart. Truly sorry. Truly remorseful. That's where repentance begins. It begins in your heart. It begins with accepting. I am wrong. And that's so hard for a lot of us, isn't it? Hello? Are you still here? Jesus speaking, Matthew chapter 4 verse 17. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent! For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent! Repent? (laughs) What does it mean to repent? To have a change of mind. A broken heart. To have a change of mind. It begins in your mind. It begins in your mind. And that's why the Bible says, men look at the outward appearance. What does God look at? Hello? Are we together? What does God look at? Mm -hmm. Men look at you very spiritual. Or maybe not spiritual. Yeah, this one. Are these the kind of people that are going to heaven? (laughs) But God sees the heart. And then you see people like me speaking in tongues. Oh, oh, these are the Jim Jim people. Something happened yesterday. I don't know what conversation my children were having. And my son asked my daughter, that, has rapture taken place? And she said, rapture, and mommy's still here. <laughs> I lifted my, I told my husband, I said, I'm in trouble. Am I the yardstick? <laughs> so you see me and her, this one, they are the ones going to heaven. In fact, if I peep in heaven and she's not there, then rapture has... <laughs> Man looks at the outward appearance, the gym gym, the grad grad, the tongue speaking, <laughs> and the vibration. But may I say to you, the Lord looks at your heart. The content of your heart. Where's your heart this morning? Is it broken before God? Isaiah 66 from verse 1 to 2. Thus says the Lord, heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you will build for me? And where is the place of my rest? For all those things my hand has made, and all those things exist, says the Lord. But on this one will I look. On him who is poor or humble, and of a contrite heart, and who trembles at my word. What are you going to give to God? Your house? Who gave it to you in the first place? The Bible says the earth is what? The Lord and the fullness thereof. He owns you. He owns what you have. He owns what you're chasing, what you're trying to get, what you will get, what your children's children will get. The earth is the Lord. Are you still here? The fullness is the Lord. So if it's all his, he's asking you this morning. What do you want to bring to me? What do you want to bring to me? You bring an offering. It exists already. I have that. You bring a song. I have that. You bring me anything material. I have that. He said, on this I will look. On what? 
him who is humble and of a contrite spirit and who trembles at my word, who reverses my word, who honors my word. In another scripture, he says, if I am your father, where is my honor? If you call me father, where is my honor? Where? Hallelujah. We are saved by grace. And I think our generation needs to understand grace. (laughs) We are saved by grace. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. For by grace are ye saved through faith. And that not of yourself. It is the gift of God. Not of works. Lest any man should boast. Hallelujah. So we are saved by grace. But that grace is not a license to sin. The Bible says in Romans chapter 6 verse 1. Are we going to continue in sin? Because there's grace. That grace may abound. What does it say in verse 2? God forbid. Tofiakwa. Olomaje. Alekiai. What other language do we have? God forbid. How can we who are dead in sin, dead to sin, begin to live in it again? How? How can you say you're dead to sin? How can you say you're born again, but you do not live the life of the God kind of life? There's no fruit of godliness. How can we say we are Christians? And we're not moved when we lie, when we cheat. There's nothing is breaking you. It's all right. We are saved by grace. God is sending you a reminder this morning. Hello? Broken. A broken and a contrite spirit. I will not despise. You cannot come to the Lord on your own terms. You've got to come to him on his terms. Are you still here? Apostle Paul's witness. Acts chapter 26, verses 19 and 20. Therefore, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision, but declared first to those in Damascus and in Jerusalem and throughout all the region of Judea and to the Gentiles that they should what? Repent. Turn to God and do works. Befitting repentance. Do works. Befitting repentance. If you've truly repented, it will show. Hello, somebody. (laughs) If you've truly repented, it will show. The people around you will see the difference in your life. If you are the way you used to be, something is not quite right. There must be works befitting repentance. Doing deeds, according to Amplified Version, doing deeds and living lives which are consistent with repentance. We are called to godly living. Brokenness leads to godly sorrow. You know, I'm a church child. I grew up in a generation where people will fall down before God and weep not because something or somebody did anything to them, but because they're sorry. Because they're sorry. Because they're sorry about what they did. Does your heart prick you when you fall short of God's word? Do you accept your transgression? Or do you come before God with self-righteousness? Brokenness 
leads to godly sorrow. Second Corinthians chapter 7, verses 8 to 10. For even if I made you sorry with my letter, Apostle Paul speaking to the church in Cor- at Corinth, right? So this was to the church, not to Bob Joe down the street. Even, for even if I made you sorry with my letter, I do not regret it, though I did regret it. For I perceive that the same epistle made you sorry, though only for a while. Now I rejoice that you were made sorry. Mm. I rejoice that you're looking sober right now. That the Holy Spirit is working on you and speaking to you, Paul, Apostle Paul said. I rejoice that you were made sorry, but that your sorrow led to repentance. For you were made sorry in a godly manner that you might suffer loss from us in nothing. Verse 10, for godly sorrow produces what? I didn't hear you, church. Godly sorrow produces repentance leading to salvation. Not to be regretted, but the sorrow of the world produces death. He's speaking to you that your heart should be pricked. You should feel, you should feel sorrowful when you hear the word of God and you compare it to yourself and there's something for you to adjust that we take God's word seriously. God is sorrow produces repentance. When you're truly sorry, then repentance can come. And the Lord speaking in Second Chronicles chapter 7, he says, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, and what? Turn! He's talking about his people. Are they wicked people of God? Hello? Are you in church this morning? Are there wicked people of God? He says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, pray, turn from their wicked ways. And he's speaking to you this morning. If my people in Inspire mm, will humble themselves, pray, and what? Turn from their wicked ways. I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and restore their land. God, this sorrow leads to true repentance. When the word of God was spoken to people in Acts chapter 2, what did they do? The Bible says they were caught to the heart. Acts chapter 2 verse 37. They were caught to the heart. It begins from your heart. If the word of God cannot divide through that heart (laughs) and have an impact in that heart, We cannot have true repentance. They were cut to the heart and they asked, men and brethren, what shall we do? What do we do about this? So godly sorrow leads to true repentance, to a true change of mind. And then repentance must lead to action. Someone was joking many years ago, I know it, it was a joke, but maybe it's not so funny. Said some of us, when we're baptized, you're thrown into the water as a dry sinner, and then they bring you up a wet sinner. Mm. So you were dry. How many were baptized in the house? You should be if you're not yet baptized. Mm-hmm. Mm. Scripture says we're buried. With Christ, right? That's the symbolism of baptism. We're buried. We're dead. We're dead to sin. We're dead to the works of the flesh. And now we have reason with him unto a new life. If any man be in Christ, he's what? All things have passed away. He is a new creation. He's not quite the same person he used to be. Is that your testimony? Are you a new person? Do you think you're a new person and people are saying, not quite, I don't think so. You know, someone once said, 
the best person. How many people are married in the house? You're married. I'm proudly married. Don't you? <laughs> Someone said if they want to test you're truly born again, they should ask your spouse. You might think that you have changed. I'm now a new. <laughs> and bro is saying, really? You. <laughs> mm. Repentance must lead to action. We must see it. It's not something that only angels can discern. It must be evident. It must be evident. Are you dead to sin? I have good news for you this morning. (laughs) The Bible says that Jesus has given us victory over sin. So sin no longer has dominion over you. Do you know that? This is how I understand the tame elephant. When the elephant is still very young, they tie the elephant to a stick or some some stationary object. And that huge animal tries and tries, cannot free itself. After a while, the mind is conditioned such that if you even put a very flimsy rope the elephant doesn't even make an attempt. And for some of us, you're that elephant. And a flimsy rope is holding you down. What you don't know or what you don't remember is that Jesus has given you the authority and the power over sin. Sin no longer has dominion over you. You're not as powerless as you think in your contention against sin. We are all, you know, the best of man is a man. We are all human beings. I'm just a normal human being. No, you are supernatural. The power of God in you is more than enough to help you in this fight against sin. So the first action this morning is choose not to allow sin have dominion over you. Choose. Like that elephant, snap that cord. Choose. Why do I say that? Romans chapter 6, verse 11 to 13. So you also should consider yourself to be dead to the power of sin and alive to God through Jesus Christ. Verse 12. Do not let sin control the way you live. Hold it. If you did not have the power to take that action, Scripture wouldn't record it that way. Are you in the house? Do not let sin means you have the capacity to stop sin from having dominion over you. Are we together? So don't tell me I'm, 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 you know, someone said, Every man is adulterous. It's not true. It's a lie of the devil. Are there godly men in this house? Do not let sin have dominion over you. Mm. Do not give in to sinful desires. Do not let any part of your body become an instrument of evil to serve sin. Do not. Who's going to do it? Who's going to take that action? Do not, do not, do not. (laughs) Hallelujah. The Bible says, instead, give yourselves completely to God. Again, who's going to take that action? Who's going to do the giving? A broken spirit. A broken spirit. Do not and then do. Give yourself completely to God, for you were dead, but now you have new life. So use your whole body as an instrument to do what is right for the glory of God. Jesus put the power right back in your hands. Now you choose. Now you choose. 
Humble yourself before God. We know the scripture in Luke chapter 18 from verse 9 to 14. We don't have time to read through. Where the tax collector was praying. Right? We know that scripture. You have the tax collector and the Pharisee. And the tax collector says, God, please be merciful to me. The Pharisee said, Lord, I thank you because I'm not like one of those sinners. Mm, I actually pay my tithe. I'm not like one of those sinners. I come to church every Sunday. I'm not like one of those sinners. I pray. I fasted 50 days. I'm not like one of those sinners. I don't drink. I don't smoke. In fact, I'm very faithful to my spouse. I'm not like one of those. Mm -hmm. Mm. And the Bible said the tax collector left justified. Humble yourself before God. There's something God needs to fix in your life. There's There's something you need to work on. Replace simple actions with works befitting repentance. Don't come to God and remain as you are. Don't come to church and remain as you are. You hear the word of God and it's like pouring water on a rock. Nothing is changing. No! Your life should be transformed. I'm not going to read the entire scripture. When we go back, we can read Ephesians chapter 4. In verse 27, it says, do not give place to the devil. Don't give a place to the devil. Can I speak to you this morning? I know that chick in your office is fine and she's throwing herself at you. Don't give a place to the devil. Say, no, I I don't have anything with her. We're just going for a simple, casual, platonic, platonic meal. We just wanted to talk. Don't give a place to the devil. Are you in the house this morning? Don't give a place to the devil. My boss is just being nice to me. Just being nice to me. And now we're going on a training. And uh, we're going to be in the same, but he's been very nice to me. He likes to talk to me. Don't give a place. You can get the warning signals. Don't give a place to the devil. Let him who stole steal no more. Verse 28. If you used to steal, have a change of mind. That's what it means to be broken. To be truly sorry. Come to Jesus as you are. But don't remain that way. Let him who commits adultery. Let him who does pornography do it no more. Mm, what's on your phone? What's on your laptop? In the privacy of your room? I know you pay your tithes. I know you fasted 50 days. What have you been watching in your bedroom? The worship of other gods. I remember we were waiting on God for children and it took a while. And one of our good friends, he's still our good friend, came to my husband and said... I will just take you to Ibadan. There's one Baba there. He will not do anything, no. He will just put something in Blessing's hand and she will get pregnant. Where have you been going? Who have you been listening to? Who's been putting things in your hand? Idolatry. The worship of other gods. Say, eh, it, that's the way it is in our village. When we go for Christmas, we have to go to the village deity. And I don't, I don't do anything wrong. I just give them the money to, to represent you before other gods. It's time to repent this morning. Mm, sorcery. Black magic. You, <laughs> Matereko satire. Hatred. Bitterness. Envy. Jealousy. Strife. Contention. I know you speak in tongues. You speak in tongues. But people cannot live with you. You're a tigress. 
the fangs come out. Contention. Backbiting. Mm. Anger. I'm just, I'm just a human being. But don't, don't cross this line. If you cross this line, the lion in me comes out. Why is there still a lion in you? If any man be in Christ, he's what? A new creature. He said, no, no, that's how we are in our family. My grandfather, in fact, my great-grandfather was a warrior. If any man be in Christ, murder. And you know, Jesus said, it's not about taking a knife and stabbing someone with your mouth. Mm, some of us are committing murder with our mouths. If any man be in Christ, drunkenness, wild parties. I'm amazed at places that Christians go to and they're comfortable. What are you looking for at a nightclub? I'm just hanging out with the boys. Why are you comfortable in that environment? If any man be in Christ, He's what? A new creature. You can't be loving the things you used to like. You can't be one of the boys. After your encounter with Jesus, something needs to change. Are you still here? If you're still lying and cheating and stealing, you're taking things from the office that don't belong to you. If any man be in Christ, <laughs> Today it's time to repent. A broken and a contrite spirit. The Lord will not despise. Let's rise up this morning. A broken and a contrite spirit. The Lord will not despise. If you're still dealing with those things, he said to tell you, come as you are. There's no condemnation. For those who are in Christ Jesus. So you're not condemned. But you cannot remain. As you are. Hello. Are you in the house? You're not condemned. But you cannot remain. If you are in Christ Jesus. The fruit of godliness. Must be manifest. In your life. Can you lift your hand to God this morning. And say, Lord, today, I declare that I am dead to this sin. Whatever it is, this is between you and God. And I'm not expecting you to lift your voice and shout. Today, whatever it is, maybe you're still dealing with anger or pride. Between you and the Lord, he's saying, a broken spirit. I would not overlook this morning. Some things are in the way of your blessing, of your increase. They're in the way of your next level. A broken and a contrite spirit. God is looking for people this morning who are truly sorry. Truly sorry. Truly sorry. Whatever it is, can you just say, Lord, I'm dead to it today. I'm dead to it today. I'm coming to you clean. There's no, there's no deception here. I cannot deceive you. Can you just say, Lord, I repent. I repent of this thing, this matter. I repent of pornography, this matter. I place it before you. I'm not even pretending before you today, Lord. I'm not even trying to look nice. This is between you and I, Jesus. I repent. I repent. I repent of adultery. I repent of fornication. Of hatred. Of bitterness. Jealousy. Envy. Strife. Contention. Anger. I repent. I've been going to the wrong places. With the wrong crowd. I repent. I repent, Lord. I'm not going to be part of idolatry. The worship of ancestors. The worship of deities. I repent before you, Lord. I repent. Let the fruit of repentance be evident in my life. I cannot be in church. 
and be a West Christian. Listening to the word, no change, year in, year out, day in, day out. I repent. I'm willing. I'm willing, Lord. I'm willing, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Can you say, Lord, today I choose to do the works befitting repentance. The power is released upon you already. And we're going to pray together as a church. But choose today. Choose. Come to God with a truly sorry heart. Broken. Broken in his presence. Broken in his presence. I surrender all. together. First, if you want to give your life to Jesus afresh this morning, if you're truly sorry, truly sorry, and you want to have a fresh start with Jesus, can you put your hand up this morning? I don't really like to bring you forward. I just want you to put your hand up as a declaration to God that you're making a new beginning today. A new beginning and a new start with Jesus. A new start in your walk with God. The fruit of repentance. Hallelujah. We'll sing that song one more time. And please lift your hand up if you want us to pray with you. I surrender. Can you lift your voices? Oh, I surrender. Hallelujah. I surrender to you, Jesus. Render the voices. Broken in your presence. Broken, broken. Broken. I'm broken. I'm truly sorry. Hey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To you, my Savior. I'm sorry. of Jesus, we pray, oh God, for everyone lifting their hands and starting afresh with you today. Lord, reach them, oh God. May this commitment be permanent. May it be the beginning of greater things in their lives, oh God. Holy Spirit, reveal Jesus to them and may their lives never be the same again. In the name of Jesus. One last thing before we leave. Can we all join our hands together? We're going to pray today as a church. We're going to pray today as a church. I want you to pray for your brother and for your sister. A broken spirit the Lord will not despise. I pray to the Lord and said, make us a people of power, a people of faith, a people of the word. We're not just going to come to church to check off the box, but he's raising giants in this house. Can you pray for the person on your right and on your left and say, Lord, transform us. Change us. Bring us closer to yourself. Every sin in our life, Lord. Father, we pray for your mercy. We pray for divine help and grace this morning. We choose as a family of believers to live according to your word. In the name of Jesus, can you pray for your brother and for your sister? Whatever it is that you're struggling with today, receive the power of God to overcome in the name of Jesus. Receive the power to overcome adultery. Receive the power to overcome fornication. Receive the power to overcome lying, idolatry. In the name of Jesus, receive the power to overcome hatred and bitterness and envy and jealousy and strife and contention. Receive the power to overcome anger. Receive the power to overcome murder and selfish ambition. Receive the power to overcome drunkenness. Receive the power to overcome being part of wild parties. Receive the power to overcome lying and cheating. 
and stealing. Receive the power this morning. Receive the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. We receive it, Lord. Hallelujah. We are transformed. Hallelujah. Now can we just lift our hands to God and worship Him this morning. Hey. We hope you found God through His Word in this message. God is not done with you yet. If you'd like to know more about Him, or have questions arising from the message you've heard, or any other inquiry you'd like to make, please call us on telephone numbers 0802-322-3560-0803-344-1592-0903-3168-847-0803-715-3366. You can also send an email to rccg.promiseland.org. Follow us on Twitter at RCCG Promised Land. At the promised land of the redeemed Christian Church of God, our hearts and arms are wide open to receive you. Welcome. God bless you.